Don't expect front row seats if you're giving nosebleed effort. Everybody want to win. Everybody want to be on a winning team. Everybody want to win, but everybody don't want to work. Everybody want the reward, but everybody don't have to want to work. We all got to work. I got to show up and show up 120. Every time where much is given, much is required, but you're going to get the rewards. Rewards come after you work, not before. The only place where success comes before work is in a dictionary. I think then um, anybody I can put a name to to promote our sport. The archer who owns all the world records, John Demmer III. You know, the more difficult a thing is, the more important the mental game becomes. I, I didn't eat any supper yet either. How about you guys? Do you guys eat yet? I didn't eat Oh, that. you know, uh, I have some crunch berries. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Grayson Parlow. It's like me taking three or four years off your eyes just because I weakened that prescription in the shooting eye. And don't put everything into my shot that I should, that I get a lot of drop on those heavy arrows. He's dropping all the way down. He said, well, you might want to think about going to a lighter arrow in the string walking. And then that's what got that started. So. All right, people, welcome back to the Barrel Project. This is a Coach Talk episode. This is sort of like the first installment of a series of episodes that are going to cover specific topics um, just to help the masses and are kind of like uh, tricks of the trade sort of episodes, informative, educational. And what, what they are is it's just going to be a collective of information from people who have or are finding success within the sport. So, um, and I mean, it's just being able to, you know, talk to these people, knowing these people and, and pulling all this information together to try to help um, the community. With that being said, shameless disclaimer, uh, listen, the information that is brought to you throughout the Bearable Project is free and we are, um, ask that in our support of Barebo, you consider joining the Patreon page. Link is in the information for the podcast in both the audio and the video version. Go check it out. Three months, I think it's a three month um, subscription. You get like a free t-shirt and stuff like that. So go go check that stuff out. Um, anyways, moving forward. So this month, your... Um, first of these uh, informative Coach Talk episodes, um, I basically polled Dwayne Martin, Robbie Weisinger, John Demmer, Maggie Brensinger, um, and uh, Matt Yaka. And we're talking about, we're kind of going back to the beginning. So this is really geared toward that new-ish um, Barebow Archer, they're just getting into the sport. They want to get into competition, um, you know. And we took we 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 took this information from these specific people. There's a few others, so I might come up with like a volume two of this um, that I also kind of quizzed. Um, but this this uh, episode is geared toward like what are the top uh, you know, all the top tips or um, recommendations for the new archer going into their first tournament. You know, what do you need to do from whatever aspect? And this isn't scripted stuff, so it's not like, hey, well, I want you to talk about equipment, or I want you. It's it's their gut reaction to the question, so that you can come up with a list of things or a, a way to mentally or physically approach your first barebow tournament. Um, so let's start with the man himself, Mr. John Demmer. Um, when quizzed with the, you know, the the top five tips for a barebow archer going into their first ever tournament, John said two very specific things. He said, observe what is going on, including other Verbo archers, and enjoy. And I guess the, the, the notation behind that is it's not that, oh, it's all about having fun. It is about having fun. 
but enjoy the moment and all of it, including while you're standing on the shooting line. Like if you're, if you're thinking about being nervous, you're going to be nervous. Instead, just think about enjoying the moment. Um, so very subtle and straightforward from John. Uh, next up, we're going to go with Dwayne Martin. Uh, Dwayne, CD archery co-owner, um, legendary, uh, 3d shooter. Um, Dwayne is a very, uh, a very experienced guy and, you know, he can shoot the indoor game extremely well. Um, you probably shoot all game well, but he really, you know, for the most part gravitates toward 3d. Um, so I asked Dwayne the same question, you know, give me, you know, I want to do a top five. Give me, give me some tips. Give me some tricks, something that Dwayne's comes up with. And I couldn't agree more. Um, he'd say one of his top five tips for bare bow archery for a new shooter going into their tournament is to shoot light poundage and resist the urge to add a bunch of extra weight to the bow. Um, that being like a bunch of extra weight, probably not just in poundage, but also overall bow mass weight. Um, I think it helps. I know I've shot some, my, some of my best cores with a, like a nine pound bow, but, um, I think there's a, there's a, uh, diminishing return on that. So, you know, and definitely light pounded poundage notion. You don't, you can tune for any poundage. So the goal there would be to set that bow up where you have the most amount of control, the most comfortable full draw feel, and be able to um, tune that bow accordingly. So that was from Mr. Dwayne Martin. Um, let's go with Robbie Weisinger. Robbie um, came up with a couple. And Robbie's sort of new to the game, but he's our national field champion. He's, um, you know, uh, international um competition experience young on the you know came from shooting art olympic recurve in college switched over the bare bow and you know he's really um i've been more fortunate to to coach and work with robbie for quite some time and he's really kind of developed into his own so robbie came up with this two-part answer he said, don't be afraid to ask questions when you are there that being at your first tournament um, part one, if you are unfamiliar with the scoring and the tournament process, ask for ask a more experienced archer. Most people in our sport would be happy to help. Um, part two, try to learn from experienced archers. Watch the successful shooters. Ask them questions about their form, their process, equipment after the, sh uh, the tournament is done. Um, and you'll be able to shorten your learning curve exponentially. Um, I, I think that's a great, and, and I think it's something that in barebow in general, there is an ample amount of people that are willing to help. So don't for a second hesitate to ask a question. You know, if they're shooting and don't have, or if, if, if an archer is shooting and maybe not having a great day, I don't know if you have to ask it in that moment, but I'll be honest with you. Like if it was me and somebody asked me, it would actually help me if you were like, hey, you know, I was wondering if you could answer this question. And I would, it, and if I'm not having a great day, it would bring me back into, oh, this is why I'm here. So don't, don't be hesitant. Um, and don't even think twice about asking questions when you're at a tournament from any, especially the bigger tournaments, you know, Vegas, Lancaster, Indoor Nationals, any of those tournaments. We're there to help always, um, definitely. Um, feel free if you are a new shooter to step up, introduce yourself, shake a hand, and um, and if you have a question, everyone that's on this podcast and that has submitted answers for this this um, specific podcast, they will without a doubt help out. So, all right, Matt Yaka, um, Pan Am champion, um, U.S. Open champion, multi-time U.S. team member. Um, Asked Matt the same thing. He said, well, if you're um, planning on going to your first ever big tournament, he said, i.e. Vegas, Lancaster, Nationals, I definitely say make sure you get some local tournaments under your belt, if at all possible. Due to lack of tournaments in his area, he said, my first tournament ever was the Vegas shoot. Probably would have been helpful to get 
a well-organized local shoot first, but there's few and far between here in Colorado. So I'm going to piggyback off of that notion and say, you also have the option to shoot archery abroad online. It's not the same as shooting an actual FIDA tournament. Granted, I, I get that. Um, however, it's a, it's, it's a, there's a, a different type of pressure. Cause you like your cameras rolling. We all shoot. Most of us, I've always shot archery abroad live. As soon as, as soon as Facebook did the live thing, I've been shooting archery abroad since 2015. I shot it with compound. I shot it with Olympic recurve. If you search through that group, you could find the videos. Um, I always did it on a live feed because it's just, it's a pain in the butt, like filming it and then worrying about it being in frame and, and like, what if it gets in, you know, what if something happens or you don't hit the record button, I don't, whatever. It's just easier to just do it live. Um, but it adds a level of, you know, because there's no turning back at all. And it adds a level of that pressure, the ability, you know, it puts you in that moment that you have to focus and make it happen. And, um, it's a really great way to to gather some experience, get that blood move um, moving, and 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 you you know that that little bit of uh, you get a little amped up. Archery Broad does a good job of that. So if you're somebody who doesn't have any experience, never shot a tournament, there's plenty of tutorials and stuff out there to figure out how, like how to score and all that stuff. You can go shoot Archery Broad, and and you know obviously. The scoring side of the way archery abroad works versus you score it the same, but you know, you write on your target. It's different than writing on the scorecard and getting familiar with electronic scoring and stuff like that. So, um, but there's, there's a lot of options out there and I definitely recommend, um, you know, don't be afraid to get outside the box and shoot. Even if it's going to bearable project and just shoot live, you're not going to get a ton of viewers, but it still amps you up enough to to it gives you a little bit of experience and every tiny aspect of experience is a good thing so don't be afraid of it don't be afraid of being uncomfortable um all right and we have miss maggie brensinger multiple multi-time uh team usa member um i think now with the Pan Ams, she is up to nine world records, um, multi-time national champion, both for target and, um, indoor, um, you know, for a 17 year old kid. And I use that because I've known her since she's like 14. Um, she's very mature and has the experience that, uh, uh more experience than most senior shooters do. Um, but she was not, she was a new shooter not that long ago. So it's still pretty fresh for her. And she, and she's got, she's always got some, some good, uh, some good ideas. So Maggie's response to, you know, for a new shooter heading to their first tournament, make sure that you are prepared, bring food, water, pay attention to what the tournament host is saying, um, and what will and will not be provided because that does change, especially, I would say, especially for outdoor target, but, um, you know, pay attention to those things. I, I think that's, that's a great, it's a very subtle and often skipped over, um, detail. Like it's so comforting being able to go to a tournament and not have to worry about running and grabbing food. You have it right there. Something that you can just snack on as the tournament's going. Um, it's it's a small detail, but it really makes a, a significant difference. So there's that. Um, and then obviously like paying attention to, I, I will say that tournaments are kind of advertised and put out there in multiple platforms. Check out, you know, get familiar with, and this is a piggyback off of hers, Sport 80, Archers, the app, lots of registrations go through Archers. Um, now there's um, uh, a couple other platforms out there that you're seeing. Uh, Eyes on scores, one that I use when I host tournaments. Get familiar with that stuff as well, um, because it's going to, you know, it's kind of pay attention to those details because they'll put in there what's included, what's not. Is there food there? Is there concessions there? Is there, you know, if if you're not a fan of job johnnies, make sure you use the bathroom elsewhere. 
you know, at a gas station or whatever, um, some kind of traveling spot before you get to the tournament um, because they, you know, you might get to a club and they don't have bathrooms. They just have job jockeys. Um, vice versa, you know, whether it's, it's, it could, they could have bathrooms or just nasty. You just don't know. Like, think about those details. Um, the food thing is crucial, especially for those long, like, double tournaments, double indoor 60 arrow rounds or a double 72. Those are long days. Um, and you don't want to eat necessarily, like, hot dogs and hamburgers all day long. Um, I don't like a lot of food in my stomach. I'm not going to lie when I shoot. So there's definitely a, um, there's sort of a, an aspect to that, that bring food that is light on the stomach. It doesn't make you have to go to the bathroom. Um, and, and obviously water, electrolytes. Um, I had my first ever bout with dehydration at target nationals um or not target nationals nfa field nationals here in pennsylvania super hot shot the practice day so like it was four days in a row of like 95 degree weather and um just was not prepared for it and i've noticed i quickly i can i'm more affected or more quickly affected by dehydration now after getting it that one time um three days shooting with headaches, stuff like that, like recognize the symptoms. If you're just like, Oh, I'm thirsty. I need to drink water. It's already too late. Um, that I learned. I mean, I think I sort of knew it. Um, but I saw it happen in real time and Demer's like, you should have been drinking a lot. He was, and, and Demer's a good friend. He's like, dude, you gotta drink. You're, you haven't touched your water. You gotta, you gotta get water. And you know, and yeah, it's, that's, that's, it's those small details that keeps your mind sharp and keeps you, on your A game during those um, during those moments. Now, from a new shooter perspective, yeah, maybe your 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 A game is not putting you on a podium, but you want to also be in a good place that you can enjoy all aspects of the tournament you're in. So it is just as important to um, be healthy and have the food and the rest and all that other stuff. You know, all right. In continuation of our coach talk about new barebow shooters going to their first tournament, um, we have a two more contributors to this topic for the masses. Grayson Partlow. Um, Grayson, if you don't know, is a multi-time um, Top eight Lancaster finisher, national champion, indoor national champion, indoor NFA national champion. Um, you know, has held um, national records multiple occasions. Um, and he's on a little bit of a hiatus at the moment. Um, I'm sure at some point in time he will be back. Um, but if there's somebody uh that really kind of knows about preparation and stuff like that which is where his his response goes in regards to this topic grayson says get there early enough to set your stuff up i'd say minimum an hour beforehand find your bail assignment um equipment check hang your target nothing sucks more than knowing what you're supposed to be doing not knowing what you're supposed to be doing and um being there and having to rush and be late. So again, for you new shooters, this is coming from the best of the best and it's very simple stuff, but it's stuff that they do not take for granted when it comes to um, shooting tournaments, even at the most advanced stages. Um, so we got one more and it is with Lena Bjorklund. If you don't know Lena, um, she comes from Sweden married to Eric Janssen. Um, they come to Lancaster often, uh, almost every year for the last, I don't know how many years. Um, we love having them over here in the U.S. Great people, uh, amazing shooters. Um, Lena, I do believe, holds the Swedish national record um, and for indoor at least, maybe even some other formats that I'm not aware of over there. Um, but... I messaged Lena and she offered up um, some really good um, information in regards to kind of the training side of preparation. Lena says, practice at home like it's a tournament. 
Use everything that's, that you're familiar with or need to be familiar with while practicing. Um, like the timing, scoring, procedures of the tournament. Um, make sure you know the basic rules and study the starting list so you know who you're up against. I think that's more of an advanced thing because like a new shooter typically doesn't need to worry about that stuff. Um, but I, I, I think I get it. She said, it's pretty humiliating if you try to kind of like, and this might be an English, um, um, translation. It's humiliating if you try to show off in front of a world champion without knowing it. I think it's, I think the notion isn't necessarily, it's humiliating. Oh, or I, I don't know if the show off is the right word, um, for the, the, the feeling of that comment, I think it's a matter of, you know, if you're going up against somebody really, really good, um, and you happen to be shooting head to heads, you know, know who that person is and go into that match ready, mentally prepared. Again, we're looking at new shooters and new shooters typically aren't hitting those head to heads, but in the local tournaments, they're doing them more and more. So you may, you know, I know in our local circuit, there's probably like 10 regular barebow senior men. Um, Paul Donahue is one of them. Um, VJ, who is sort of unknown, but heck of a shooter, 520 uh, indoor, 620 outdoor. Um, you know, like those guys, those guys are, they're not, they're gunning for anyone that steps up in front of them. And that's kind of the attitude you need to go into it. And, you know, Paul's not new to the sport by any means. Um, VJ is a little bit, but. You know, and I, I get what, what Lena's saying there and take that for what it's worth, whether you're an advanced shooter or an experienced shooter or a new shooter. Um, you know, it's um, it's priceless stuff from the best in the world. I think, you know, from, from my standpoint, as a coach, as a competitor, um, you know, and then working with the plethora of people and the interviews and all, I would say that one of the most under um, utilized uh, approaches to preparing for a tournament is sleep and food. Sleep and food. A lot of people don't sleep the night before very well. Um, If you're one of those people, get out and exercise that day. Don't shoot a ton of arrows that day before a tournament. If you don't have it by then, you're not going to just magically find it. Um, it's okay to shoot them if you are uh, if you are used to high volumes of arrows. That's, that's fine. You shoot as much as you want. If you are not, it's not going to help you at that point. But the rest and the physical recovery will. Um, and start drinking your water and electrolytes the day before. Don't wait until the day of or the morning of. Guilty as charged speaking from experience the other thing that i would come with is um if it's this is probably geared more toward field and outdoor target new shooter be prepared to shoot in all conditions that which we're sort of talking about we're talking about 95 degrees and super super hot likewise be prepared to shoot in wind cold weather rain sideways rain Target Nationals a few years ago, rain was like, you know, horizontal coming down. It was bad. Um, We went through like four seasons during that tournament. Like it was chilly, windy, horizontal rain, super hot and humid. All within the same 144 arrows. Have that equipment squared away. Raincoats, um, frog togs, something, you know, extra... Um, the boning arm guard, you can get a thick, a bigger, like a, a medium, large, extra large arm guard. And if you have like a frog tog um, top, you can take that and put it, a regular one here, your regular arm guard here, and then pull it all the way up your arm to keep your sleeve in here. You can get pre-wrap or there's plenty of tape options out there that you can keep your clothing back with. There's, there's just plenty of options. Those are things that we underestimate. Um, being prepared for your tab to get wet. Um, again, we're talking like first time shooting outdoor target, 
hey, you check the weather and there's probably a good chance you could check the weather and see, oh man, it's beautiful. I'm not going to have to worry about it. That's fine. But take it with anyways because you just never know. Let's face it. Weathermen, they get paid whether they're right or wrong. And more times than not, they're not on the spot. So be prepared for that. Um, this concludes episode 77. Um, I hope to do more episodes like this. And if you have topics, if you have, you know, something that you feel really passionate about that you would love to get, um, information from the masses and, and, you know, like I, I may reach out to outside of Barebow people for some topics, um, you know, please, um, reach out to me and, um, we'll see if we can't put episodes together that are catered more toward what Barebow wants and needs and not just ideas that I come up with. So thanks for listening or watching um, Barrel Project out.